everybody, it's Penguin again, and we're again on Fudge Friday. I have asked someone if they wanted me to show them how I do my old-fashioned Hershey's chocolate fudge. Last year, I did make chocolate peanut butter, but I didn't make any just plain chocolate with no nuts or anything. Now, if a lot of you remember the old-fashioned Hershey's fudge that our grandparents, our grandmothers used to make, and our moms, it was quite, it was quite a chore to make that one and have it actually set up like it's supposed to. It was definitely a labor of love. Well, I'm basically making the same thing, but I'm making it my way, and it's not going to be quite so tedious. Now, this fudge does have a different base than any of the other fudges that I make. And though I don't use a candy thermometer because I don't like using candy thermometers, I will be doing a soft ball test on this fudge. And when we get to that point, I'll show you how I do that. Um, but for this one, you're going to be needing some granulated sugar. You're going to be needing some milk. I use whole milk. You can use 2%. It will work out fine, but I prefer to use whole milk. You're also going to need some Hershey's unsweetened cocoa. And that's this right here. I have this one and I have a big one over here. This is my, I just bought this one at Sam's this year. This is my big boy right here because my other one is about empty. You're gonna need a stick of margarine. Um, and I use a few of these. This is a 11.5 ounce bag of Hershey's milk chocolate chips. I won't be using all of these. I'll only be using about a third of the bag. And you're also going to need some vanilla extract. So that's pretty much all we're going to be using in this fudge. And it is going to be just a beautiful chocolate, creamy chocolate fudge. Without all the hassle that would come with the traditional old-fashioned Hershey's fudge. Mine is just a tad bit different. But yet again, so am I a tad bit different. Okay, I have my trusty old fudge pan here. The one I use for everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with our granulated sugar. We're going to be putting in four cups of level sugar. Two. Three. This is a very rich fudge. And there's four. So there is our granulated sugar going in. Now... On top of our granulated sugar, we're going to be doing two-thirds of a cup of Hershey's unsweetened cocoa powder. So as soon as I find my one-third cup here, it's my one-third cup. I'm gonna I want two of these, so I want a total of two-thirds. If you get a little extra chocolate in there, it's not gonna hurt anything because chocolate doesn't hurt a thing. And like I said, this one is this one. I pretty much used it all. I'll go in and scrape off some of the remnants on the sides, but can't let any chocolate go to waste now, can we? All right, opening up my new one right here. And I'm gonna take a spoon and finish filling this one. Again, we want two thirds of a cup and I usually pack it down to make sure that I'm actually getting a full one third cup. So there's one third. Take this out now. And I'm just gonna go in and see if I can do it without making too big of a mess. I'm gonna get me another one third cup of cocoa. So that is a total of two thirds cups. Okay, and clean up my chocolate mess. Now, to this, we're going to add that one cup of milk. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir first. Just stirring up my, my chocolate into my sugar a little bit. All the lumps and clumps and all of that will dissolve as you're cooking it. So no worries about that. Okay. Now I want one cup of milk. Okay. 
and that's going in. All right. Now I'm going to take this over to the stove and I'm going to get it all mixed up. Again, my burner is going to be on almost high, just between high and the notch, uh, the one notch up from high. I'm going to cook it until it comes to a boil. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to set my timer for about five minutes. No more, no less. When I get to the four minute point, I'm going to do a softball test and I will show you what that consists of. So let's get this over to the stove and get started. Okay, and I'm back and I've got my burner on almost high. And I'm just going to get this all mixed together now. All that sugar and cocoa mixed in with the milk. Because again, we don't want anything crystallizing on the bottom of the pan. So as long as we get it blended together and there's no clumps of sugar, then we'll be fine. There won't be anything that's going to crystallize on the bottom of the pan. This is where it's good if you have somebody in the kitchen, if your arm's getting tired, you got somebody in the kitchen that can give you a hand helping you stir. I'm not gonna ask Chef to do that because he's already been having a problem with his rotator cuff in that. So I'm doing this one on my own. Besides that, my flabby arms could use the exercise. Let's get this all stirred up. And remember, you do not want to use a whisk in this. We're not wanting to whisk air into it. So just get you a good old spoon of some kind. I like to use my old trusty wooden spoon. But any spoon that you use will be okay. And once this starts cooking and it starts heating up, boy, you can really smell that chocolate. That Hershey's chocolate smell really comes out. And you can smell it all over your kitchen. To me, nothing says Christmas more than fudge. I guess it's because that's just something that my grandma and mom used to make every, every Christmas. You didn't really see them ever make fudge any other time of the year except for Christmas. And I always wondered why, because fudge is good at any time, but... Just something special about having fudge at Christmas time. Now I will tell you that once this starts bubbling, you need to be careful because it can pop out of the pan. Um, unlike the other fudges that we boil, it doesn't, it doesn't usually ever leave the pan. But when you're doing this batter or this mixture, it can actually bubble out of the pan. So always try to keep your face away from it. Don't get too close to the pan. And it's probably not a good idea to let your kids stand near the stove when you're doing this either. Since most kids are eye level with the stove, it wouldn't be a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and keep stirring this. When it gets to the point where it's boiling like I want it to and I'm ready to set my timer, then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, it's just starting to bubble in the center now. I want to wait and let it get to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to wait and let it get to a more of a rolling boil. I'm just going to keep stirring it here. This is one of those fudge bases that the boiling can catch up on you um, before you know it. It boils faster than our other one does. Just keep dispersing this because I want to spread out the heat. Make sure we've got an even heat on this. I always stop stirring just so I can see where all of my bubbles are. So we almost have a full, we almost have a full rolling boil. Okay. I'm going to call that good enough. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my burner to just, just the heat side of, this the hot side of medium. 
and I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. Now, at four minutes, I'm going to start doing my softball stage test. And Chef's going to help me with that one. What you're going to want to do, if you have somebody that can help you, that's great. You're going to want to take a, a cup or a little bowl like this one and have them put some cold water in it. Yeah. You want to have them put some cold water in it. Now, this is where I was talking about it, the, the fudge um, mixture bubbling and occasionally it can you get these little steam pockets and it can pop out of the pan so you want to be very careful because if it does it's going to stick to your skin and it can burn so always keep a safe safe distance I'm holding on to the very tip of my spoon so my hands not too close <clears throat> down into the fudge mixture better to be safe than sorry it hasn't happened to me very often but it has happened to me before, so, you know, you learn from things like that. Hence the reason why we give a warning. So I'm just going to keep stirring and keep stirring. When we get to the point where we're ready to do the softball stage test, I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, we're at that point where I'm going to go ahead and do this softball stage, so if Chef can... He's going to set my water right there, and I don't know, I'm try to bring you guys down so you can see. There's my water. It's going to take my spoon, and I'm just going to let, let a little bit of this drop down into that water. Can you stir that for a minute? While Chef's stirring that for a minute, I'm going to take my fingers and gather this up. If I can form it into a soft ball without it sticking to my fingers, then I know that it's ready. And it is. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off the heat and I'll meet you back at the table. All right guys, and here we are and we're back. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump in our one stick of margarine into this chocolate. This is why I check it early because it did not take a full minute or a full five minutes. It was actually ready. It was ready at the four minute mark. All right, we want, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. Now, when you're making traditional old-fashioned Hershey, Hershey's fudge, this is where they're going to tell you don't stir it. But we're going to stir it. Cutting up my butter a little bit. And I'm going to open up these milk chocolate morsels. Since I can get them open. I should have opened them ahead of time, but I didn't. I'm gonna take my knife and pop them open. Uh oh! And I'm just gonna dump in a few, probably about a third of the bag of the milk chocolate morsels. And we're gonna stir, and you wanna stir vigorously. Scraping down your sides, make sure you get everything. We already have our pan ready with our parchment paper. We're just gonna mix, 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 mix until everything is combined and our margarine is melted. When our chocolate chips melted, our margarine melted, we're just gonna mix, mix, mix. This is what's gonna give us that smooth consistency. There's some butter that's not melted. Keep stir, stir, stirring. I have to switch arms from time to time because the old arm gets a little tired. All right. Make sure we get our butter mixed up in there because the butter will try to separate on you. So you just have to, you just have to stay on it. Don't let it get away from you. Now all of our chocolate chips are all melted. Our butter's all incorporated now. Just a little bit more. All right. 
Now, if Chef can bring my pan over for me, put the pan up here, and we're gonna pour. Pour out all that chocolate goodness. And it will set up fast, guys. It will set up very fast. Let's push it to the corners so we get our square cuts. And if you can see, it's already getting that wrinkly, that wrinkly look to the top of it. That's because we're setting up already. All right. Let's get a little bit out. There we go. I know there's a lot still in the pan, but we don't want to scrape too much because you don't want to get into grit. So we've got a good pan full of fudge right there. So I'm going to pass that over to Chef. I'm just going to shake this a little bit. And there you go. That is the old fashioned Hershey's fudge, chocolate fudge made penguins way. It's very quick, very simple. And it's a no fail. You're gonna have a fudge that's gonna set up for you perfect every time if you do like I did. So again, we're gonna let this sit at room temperature for about an hour. And after that, then I'm gonna cover it. Um, we usually put our fudges covered out in our laundry room um, on top of the washer or something. It's not hot out there, it's not cold out there. It's just a good temperature. And when it gets completely set up, which won't be too long, like I said, it's already, it's got that wrinkly sheen to it. And I'm already touching it and it's not sticking. So it should be set up in just a little over an hour. And then we will cut it and we will taste it and we'll show you guys what it looks like. So we'll be back in a bit, guys. Okay, guys, this is fudge number two. This is our old fashioned Hershey's chocolate fudge. We've also had it wrapped up and sitting out in the other room so I'm gonna take this off of here and set it on my cutting board like always and fold this down let me get a clean knife I'll be right back okay guys I want to apologize because I thought I was recording this while I was cutting it and I didn't realize until I had already cut it that I didn't have the camera on so here is Hershey's Old Fashioned Chocolate Fudge. Yum, yum, yum. So, of course, we're going to take a bite. You can see how creamy that texture is. Right there. The sheen in it. Mmm, 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 mmm. Would you like a piece, Chef? Yeah. Chef's favorite fudge. <laughs> oh, yeah. A good chocolate fudge. This is Chef's favorite fudge. Of all the flavors that we make, yeah. this is Chef's absolute favorite. Yeah. Regular old Hershey's chocolate. He likes the regular old-fashioned Hershey's chocolate fudge. Okay, guys. So, this ends fudge video number two. I still have another fudge video to make, but I think I'm not going to make it tonight. I think I'm going to hold off on it tomorrow, until tomorrow. So I'm going to show you guys this. We're going to end the video for now. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.